One issue that comes up quite a bit when we're trying to reach our friends and neighbors in the churches of Christ is the question concerning the thief on the cross. And when this question is put toward the members of the churches of Christ and they are asked, how could this man be saved apart from water baptism while he was literally dying, typically you will get a response from our Church of Christ friends and neighbors that the thieves in fact died before Jesus died and since the thieves died before Jesus died Jesus could forgive them in any manner the particular one particular thief how who was repentant however he so desired and then Jesus died after that fact and they will also cite a passage in Hebrews talking about supposedly their particular mistranslation of that verse that the the testament goes into effect after men have died when in fact the Greek text actually reads the, the testament goes into effect when they died never mind the fact that um, this particular response shows how extremely ignorant m many of the, these um, poor souls are about basic biblical issues because in John 19 ex it explicitly says that when the soldiers came um, to break the legs of the, the people who were on the, the cross that Jesus was already dead when they came to him and they just broke the thieves legs so that they would die before the Sabbath came so this should be a major red flag they aren't really as strong on the, the Bible as they actually are but once you get to that point you'll get several different response as well how do you know this man really wasn't baptized or they also say well the requirement for baptism didn't become into effect until Acts 2 anyway so it's really a, a, a moot issue but the very fact here that we can see that they keep they, they can't settle on one answer on how to answer this particular objection should be a major red flag and if you really think about it, they are contradictory to one another. This particular tactic is really nothing more than an attempt to throw everything but the kitchen sink at the wall, hoping that something sticks so that their members and potential converts will stop asking questions and stick to their narrative. On the one hand, they will say the thief didn't have to get baptized because the new covenant was not in effect. Yet, on the other hand, they assert John's baptism was for the forgiveness of sins, so it's highly likely the thief was baptized. Well, which of these scenarios actually occurred? You can't hold to both of these explanations without destroying their whole theory of justification. But the purpose of this video is to comment on something that many people haven't really thought about when it comes to this issue and it highlights something of a more subtle and much more troubling nature of the situation that we find within the COC that many people do not understand. This notion that Jesus was God and could forgive anyone however he wanted while on the earth is extremely troubling because it does in fact reveal the COC's weak understanding of the Trinity that they have literally inherited from the interactions in the early days of the restoration movement between Alexander Campbell and Barton W. Stone. As they, in the case of Stone, reject the Trinity, saying that Jesus was a created being, and Alexander Campbell holding to a weak view of the Trinity and willing to give the right hand fellowship to anyone who simply confessed that Jesus is Lord. The issue of the Trinity becomes for them a secondary or a tertiary issue making it something that is non-definitional to the Christian faith. Yet the testimony of Jesus himself is explicitly contradictory to these claims as we find in John 5 19. Quote, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees the Father doing. Also, consider John 14, 31. Jesus stated that he did, quote, as my Father has commanded me. Also, John 17, 8. 
Jesus stated that the words that the Father gave him, he delivered to the disciples. The message he preached to the disciples was the same message that he preached to all. He didn't have the authority willy-nilly to determine different terms of forgiveness. This message was delivered to him by his father himself and the nature of the son is to do as the father commanded him. This explanation given by the COC ultimately turns Jesus himself into some sort of a rogue deity that works outside the will and the parameters of the mission that the Father gave for him to do. Their explanation flies in the face of the doctrine of the Trinity and validates the assertions of the unbelieving Jews of Jesus' own day. Also, if Jesus could, at a whim, forgive however he wanted to do in his earthly ministry, who are they to say that he can't do the same thing now? And if he could, how do they even know that they are saved in the way that they claim in the first place? Perhaps Jesus, on a whim, made an exception for them, as he did on the, concerning the thief. Also, concerning this idea that there was John's baptism, and then this hard break to Christian baptism in Acts 2. Where exactly does the Bible use the language Christian baptism? If this distinction truly exists, exactly what baptism was Jesus himself commanding of the people while he was preaching the gospel and proclaiming that he was a long-awaited Savior along with John the baptizer doing this himself and that the salvation was dependent upon his atonement. For these assertions that I just made, I invite you to read John 4, 1, Luke 4, 43, John 1, 29, Matthew 11, 28, John 4, 26, John 12, 32. In conclusion, the sheer amount of arrogance and biblical illiteracy that is required to sustain this position is beyond breathtaking. Yet this shotgun defense comes from the self-proclaimed experts on Holy Writ and the people who claim that they are the only ones who speak where the Bible speaks and are silent where the Bible is silent. This kind of apologetic doesn't keep people who are truly seeking Christ and feasting on his word in their fold. It instead drives them far from it. And in fact, this type of argumentation was a significant fact for myself leaving this religious organization. I hope this video provides a unique answer that many haven't dwelt on on how we can approach this issue when dealing with our friends and neighbors from the Churches of Christ. And I hope this video finds you well and that it helps you out tremendously. Have a great day.